this week's Be The Drop episode is coming live from Government House here in the Adelaide CBD because tonight I'll be joining 125 Adelaide CEOs to raise funds and awareness for those affected by homelessness. I will be talking to a range of business leaders to find out what it is that motivates them to support this worthy cause and why they think it's so important to be part of something bigger than just themselves. This is Be The Drop at the CEO Sleepout. To get the episode started, we're going to hear from Sarah Williams, who works for Vinnie's SA, and she's going to explain to us why this work is so valuable and what they do with the funds to help those people affected by homelessness. Homelessness has a lot of different faces. It's not just about um, those that you see that may be on the street. And that's our challenge um, at Vinnie's and we're all about giving people a hand up, not a hand out. And that's something that you'll hear us talk about a lot through media and, and through other avenues. Um, the Vinnie's CO Sleep Out is very much, um, it's an important event for us. It's our major fundraiser of the year. Um, last year we raised $629,000 in South Australia alone, which is just phenomenal. We had 114 CEOs and senior executives and business owners and leaders sleeping out at the event in Whitmore Square last year. This year we've currently got 130 CEOs who have registered to take part, to step up and say we need to do something about homelessness. It's just wrong that so many people cannot afford to be in their own homes and don't have a place to call home. The biggest question I get asked is where does the money go? Uh, and that's really important. We um, pride ourselves in having, we're a volunteer run organisation. There's only a handful of us that are, that are uh, paid employees at Vinnie's. So we have over 3,000 volunteers who are on this, on, out in the community. So we are the only volunteer um, organised charity organisation who actually goes into people's homes and um, visits people in their home. And what that means is that, you know, it might be that they've rung for support and they might say, you know, I don't have any food, can you help me? So we give them food parcels. But when we're there, our volunteers can see firsthand that, you know, look, there's a child who is in summer clothes in the middle of winter. You know, they're in a singlet and shorts. Do you need help with some, some clothes as well? So we have 36 shops around South Australia and we can give them uh, vouchers to go and be clothed so that they don't have to suffer with you know, being freezing cold. Um, we offer support with utilities um, and a whole other raft of, of areas. We also provide support through Fred's van and some of you may have seen Fred's van uh, often in um, Goula Place and such places. There are 10 Fred's vans throughout South Australia. We also assisted over 7,800 people including 4,000 children through our Migrant Refugee Centre. And we all know how much that is in the, in the news at the moment. Um, we also uh, mentor hundreds of others and find pathways to employment, so it's another service we provide. And Vinnie's SA is looking to expand our support for women in crisis, which is um, absolutely horrific. When 423 women a night around Australia are turned away from homeless services because of domestic violence. And domestic violence is the number one cause of homelessness, which is just an horrendous statistic. So that's where all the money goes to our services that we raise and without the support of, of leaders like Amelia and others in Adelaide who are raising money at the CO Sleepout, we are not able to provide those services. Hi, so I'm Kim from Getaways SA. So we're a multi-award winning uh, tourism business. We do tours, accommodation and experiences throughout SA. Great, and you were just saying before this is the third time? It is. Well organised, great mm. group of people here, all with the same common goal. And the other thing I really love, we're all wearing the same clothes here. We're all wearing the same beanies. The only way we really know who we're talking to, we could be talking to the CEO of a bank or, you know, a head guy for the police and the whole thing is that as our little taxi but we're all on the same level for the same cause and the same goal so. and we all have to sleep on the same piece of cardboard absolutely <laughs> on the same cold floor yeah absolutely 
and you're just looking up and you go, how thankful are we? Yeah. You know, for, for all our situations that we're all in ourselves. Yeah. This is one night for us and tomorrow I'll go home to my warm bed. Absolutely. But imagine those people that have to do it night after night. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Tonight, I'm so thrilled to welcome you to the ground of the government house in support of the BBE's fine work in our community. It is very sobering to know that 12,000 Australian children under the age of 12 are homeless and with no bed of their own to be safely tucked into each night. But ladies and gentlemen, we can and we are doing something about this. By sleeping out tonight, you are all raising awareness of the daily struggles of homeless people, advocating for their support and offering Vinnie's much needed funds to carry out their important work. So, how, sorry, how yeah. many layers have you got going on there? I just, Ooh, I see, I can see. It. I reckon there's about seven or eight there right. going on, yeah. So that, that's your philosophy for getting through the cold? Layer up? Layer up, yeah, that, and, and I'm very soft when it comes to cold, so. Right, yeah, yeah, not yeah. a fan? I've, no, I've come into it knowing that. Fortunately, in, in a lot of ways, in a, in a country like Australia, um, Homelessness is not something that we are as confronted with. So uh, I spent quite a long time living uh, overseas. I lived in the in the US for a long time, um, and it's a, it can be a lot more obvious there. Um, and here, you you can be you can go about your daily life without being confronted by it. Um, and I think that's that's a, a challenge for uh, for individuals to understand. Um, what a big issue it was. I know when I started looking into it, once I committed to, to doing this, um, I had no idea that you know more than 100,000 people on any given night are yeah. sleeping rough in, in Australia, in, in the lucky country. So yeah. um, it's, it was eye-opening for sure. Um, when you don't have much knowledge about it, it's easy to think um, of just some extreme examples of, of people that are homeless. Yeah, um, and the stereotypes. The stereotypes of that. However, once you start to delve into it a little bit, you realise how many uh, different pathways yeah. um, there are to people ending up in this situation. And, and that, um, I think that resonates with, with individuals easier. So when we put out a lot of our communications to, you know, on social media or directly to friends and family, um, that was a really important element. Uh, and the Vinnie's uh, uh, Sleep Out marketing materials did a really good job of that, of kind of yeah. describing the different pathways that people um, might take to, to end up in this situation. Yeah. It's not as straightforward as, um, you know, substance abuse or, you know, things that people generally might think of. Tonight is fantastic, it's, yeah. uh, but it feels like a culmination yeah. uh, of the efforts over the past six, eight, 12 weeks. Um, and uh, so I, my takeaway um, really is um, an increased gratitude. Uh, an increased level of gratitude for um, for the blessings that I have in my life and uh, uh, and that my friends and family enjoy and to really remember to appreciate that. Oh, well, what a wonderful takeaway. Thank you so much for joining me appreciate in the hot it. seat, Scotty. No worries now at all. I think we've got Craig somewhere back there. Um, this is my second experience here at the Vinnie's CEO Sleepout. Very excited to be back here at Government House. Thank you so much for having us. And. Uh, it may not be a warm or a comfortable experience for us all, but I know from my last experience here, it was entirely well worth the effort. At 150 over here on my left, should we just take it to 200? Yeah, cool. 200 we have. At 200, looking for another 50 from there, 250. I don't know how to love you. That's what it is, guys. Come on! Uh, well, my business is Intrepid Property. We're commercial real estate agents. Um, so that's sort of more, less about the business, um, more here about supporting Vinnies and the great work they do. So this is my sixth year. Six? Yeah. Well done. Yeah. The uh, amount in the dollar that's donated to them that gets returned in actual services and, and, and helping people is, is far superior to many other charities. So a lot of people... Um, are volunteering their time in this organisation, which means that uh, it allows that money to flow down to the people who actually need it. Yeah. Um, whereas having you know executives on ridiculous salaries uh, and and a big administration, um, a lot of that money goes straight back to the community and the people that need it. Yeah. 
Can you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure. So my name's Emily Rossitano and I work for um, Access to Place. So I'm Access to Place Housing. So I'm a tenancy manager. So we house people with disabilities. So yeah, so I've been there since 2014 from day dot there, so it's been really interesting. Yeah, but this is your first CEO sleep out, is. is that right? It is, so my CEO did it last year, so I was kind of um, persuaded to do it this year. So, no, but happy to be here, it's gonna be a really good experience. Yeah, and yeah. so what are you feeling? Like, what are you feeling going into this being your first? You know what, I wasn't like, I feel like everybody in my office was so like stressing out for me, but I felt, I feel really calm and you know, it's just one night, so it's, you know, I'm not really, worried or stressed or anxious or anything like that i mean it's one night people do this every single night with you know a lot less things that you know we get um tonight yeah. i think people think oh it doesn't happen you know not in adelaide but i think this will also make me realize how like i know but really show me how um you know how much it does go on in adelaide and how you know how many people are actually homeless so i think mm. it's going to be a really good learning and i'm going to take a lot of um you know, facts and, and, and new things from here. So, no, it'll be good. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, no, Emily. No and good worries. luck. I hope Thank you stay dry. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
What is it about Vinny's organisation and the CEO Sleepout that keeps you coming back? So when the Sleepout first started, I was a CEO, so that's one thing. But more importantly, I was born into Vinny's. My mother ran the Hawthorne op shop for Vinny's for 10 years. And um, she thinks that she never had a paid job, but she had 80 volunteers turning and turned it into the best op shop in South Australia. Yeah. So, um, and my dad, who's 83, um, is a member of what they call a, a Vinny's conference. So even this week, um, he has been doing a home visit to somebody who was a bit short of cash and who can't live on the pension and helping them out with a food voucher and a bit of a contribution to their electricity bill. And 83. Yep. For an organisation which is really quite small in terms of paid staff, it, it does a huge amount of good. Yes, and I think that's interesting. You know, an organisation that's small in paid staff, but volunteers, what was David saying? 3,000 3, volunteers. Yeah. And that's up from about 2,000 five years ago. When they announced the sleep out, a young lass con uh, contacted Vinnie's and said, this is bullshit, this is a stunt, I've been homeless, I'm appalled by what you're doing. And I can kind of see that perspective. And to his absolute credit, David said, why don't you come and talk to our CEOs and tell them what it's really like to be homeless. Yeah. And she did. And I've met her several times and that last Thea is now um, instrumental in introducing Fred's van into Port Pirie and volunteers for Vinnie's. Yes. And how's that for the power of a story, but also the power of respecting people's where, wherever, they're, wherever they're at. <laughs> so here we are. Has it clicked over to midnight, guys? Not quite. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, it's after we're there. Midnight. Okay, so we're going to be quiet. Silence. So, okay, so we're here at the CEO sleep out. Are we delaying going to bed because it's really cold? What's happening? No, we're gathering around the tea. The, the tea. Tell me, is this your first time? This is my first time at the winter sleep out. Yes, indeed. So, Kate, this is your first time as well? Uh, this is my uh, 1.5. Can I say it like that? Yeah. I came last year. I didn't stay last year. Oh. I came to support my team who have just disappeared from behind yeah. me. Um, we're involved with Vinnie's in a marketing capacity, uh, but I left them to it. Yeah. I don't think they got any sleep. I had plenty of sleep. But this year I'm I'm on board. Here right. I am. And so what, do you, what for you guys, what's the thing that motivates you to get involved in the CEO Sleep Out? Every time I think about doing this and, and the, the position that so many women are in, putting their child to bed under a bridge or in the back of a car or whatever it might be with empty tummies, dirty nappies and no promise of their next feed. And I think I just need to be a tiny little part of changing that. Yeah. So that's why I had to do this. Just... I know this is not a real experience com uh, compared to the people who are actually homeless, but this has opened my eyes. I've had two cries tonight. Yeah. Um, so this does actually give you a tiny little insight to the thought processes and the choices and the situations and the, um, the, the picture. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to do it. And I, yeah, I feel if everybody can do one little thing to, yeah. to understand it and therefore perhaps be more compelled to make, make some um, actions towards changing it. Yeah. Then and every bit and all combined makes that difference. Sure. Yeah. Brenton, what about for you? Well, about two years ago, I was living in the city and I had a very interesting little experience. I was walking back from a pub, as you do when you're buying a counter meal or whatever it was, yeah. and I ran into a bloke I used to go to school with and he was carrying a sleeping bag on his back. And I was like, obviously talked to him about it and found out he was sleeping on the street and that he'd been sleeping on the street for quite some time. And I'd gone through high school with this particular person and it affected me for weeks and weeks after because I couldn't get it out of my head that it's just... And at that particular point, you know, it was actually a few years back, I think I'd started my business and you go through the ups and the downs and you wonder if, you know, you, you know, you can see that if you do the wrong thing, it wouldn't be too hard to come unstuck, right? So it could happen to anyone. And like we heard tonight, you know, there was a number of stories about people you wouldn't know that they're living rough, but... You know, they're on the below the poverty line, um, but they look okay. It's yeah. like you don't know there's anything wrong necessarily, but they're they're struggling just on a daily basis. And I think, I think what did we hear? Was it 2.8 million? 2.9 million people in yeah. Australia below the poverty line. And that's with shocking. the way things are going, if we don't pull together, that's going to get worse. Yeah. So I think, realistically, in Australia, no one should have to sleep on the street. 
we are a very blessed country. We've got such a good social system. So I think we need to pull together, even if it's just to raise awareness, but certainly money, mm. because you know you can make a difference. Look at, I mean, the, the lady tonight who got a car, and yeah. and how that all came about um, was pretty special. So yeah. you see that kind of thing, and you think it's changing it, lives. It's not impossible for people to make a difference. And I think that that's a huge part of what Vinnies are trying to do is change the understanding, the perception of homelessness. Yeah. It, they haven't got there because they've made a bad choice because they've just been um, silly and outrageous and they've just partied too hard and dwindled their money away and, and ended up with a, a drug addiction. Um, you know, sometimes people have come through these circumstances for years and years and years and years and it's not their choice but they've wound up there and the small things like smiling at somebody and actually recognizing that that person that's sleeping rough yeah. is mm -hmm. a beautiful human being that mm -hmm. could you could change their whole world just by smiling at them or treating them like a person well, sometimes it's not sleeping rough sometimes it's people being on the edge of sleeping rough like you know you were hearing tonight about you know people don't have enough money to keep their lights yeah. on etc yeah. or they have to choose between you know paying for their kids lunch at school yeah. versus yeah. having a place to live mm -hmm. and so you've got people on that knife's edge and so if you can bring them back from that nice edge so they don't have to end up in that position that's, that's really good. very good yeah. yeah sort of show you but you can't really this is something that you have to feel everything is damp not because it rained but because it's so cold it's absolutely mind-boggling to me that people there are people 105,000 people in Australia have to do this every night and some of them might have to do it night after night it's just mind-boggling to me because it's really uncomfortable. This is it. Is that comfortable? Um, not really, if I'm honest. How, how come everybody else's cardboard looks so much bigger? Because <laughs> they know how to do it properly. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm 